Hello everyone! Welcome! Do you want to know if a servant is worth your hard-earned Saint Quartz? Well, congrats, you're in the right place, you found me. Welcome to the Fake Go Gotcha Guide, where I will tell you whether the topic servant of the day is worth your time. Today's topic servant is the Jeanne d'Arc of India, Lakshmi Bai. We will cover all of the points that you can see on screen here in just a moment, but before we go into these, here's a fun fact with Lakshmi Bai. She was a famous leader of the Indian Rebellion of 1857. It's said that she was so well respected as a tactician that even the army, their enemies, the English army, left words of praise for their battles until she died on the battlefield. So, on to my personal opinion. In my personal opinion, Lakshmi Bai is bad in this game. Two of her skills have effects that may fail. Those skills are not that strong even if they succeed, and she can't even double Scotty loop without some extra help despite being an AoE quick servant. Her only niche that she's really all that good at is providing increased buff success rate to her allies, but that is often not really worth the party slot. So let's head into her stats and take a look at wh why I think this. Lakshmi Bai is a four star AoE Saber, meaning that she is super effective against Lancers and weak against Archers. She has 9,949 attack at level 80, which is pretty darn high for a 4-star, actually. While her defense at level 80 is 11,362, which is a little above average for 4-stars, so not bad on the base stats. Going into her hidden stats, we see that her MP gain on hit is 1.01%, very, very high for modern-day servants. As for her cards, her quick card has three hits, her arts card has two hits, and her buster card has four hits, while her extra has five hits, a little bit below average on the hit count overall. Her star weight, aka how easy it is to get stars onto her cards over other servants, is at a 96, pretty average, while her star creation rate is 10%, another uh, average stat. All in all, her stats are pretty good. It's... Really, her high NP gain on hit and her high base stats that push her over the edge to a pretty good statted servant. However, her weakness will come as we look at her skills and MP in just a moment. Looking at her deck and her MP, we see that she has one arts card, two quick cards, and two buster cards, a non-standard 2-1-2 deck with an extra quick over an arts card. Her noble phantasm, Nahin Denge, the nation that withstood colonization, is an AoE Quick Noble Phantasm that does four hits. It deals damage to all enemies, removes their offensive buffs, which include attack up, attack up, damage up, crit up, etc., etc., and reduces the critical attack chance for three turns by 20 to 40% based on the overcharge. This is a pretty defensive MP as it's focused on making sure the enemies are able to do less damage by removing their offensive buffs and lowering their critical attack chance. With only four hits on this, it makes it extremely hard for her to Scotty loop, even with her very high NP gain. So, not the best MP in the world because of it. Next up, let's take a look at her passives. Whoops. So, she has Magic Resistance A that increases debuff resist by 20%, Riding B to increase her quick performance by 8%, and Goddess's Essence C to increase her damage by 200 and her debuff resistance by 20%. Overall, nothing exciting here. Riding is a nice damage boost, NP gain boost, and star creation boost for most of her cards. However, it's only at a B level, and you wish that was a little higher. She does have abnormally high debuff resistance due to these passives, though, so if you do need a servant for a more gimmicky fight where your opponents are trying to curse you or burn you to death, this is a servant that can resist some hits of those, and might be fine to slot in because of it. Moving on to her skills. First off, we have Charisma of the Rani. This increases the party's attack for three turns by 10 to 20%. Has a 60% chance to increase the party's star generation rate by 30 to 50% for three turns, and has a 60% chance to increase the party's critical damage by 30 to 50% for three turns. This is where we start seeing the weakness of Lakshmi Bai. This is a very simple charisma buff at its base with two additional pretty good buffs. Unfortunately, those two good additionals are locked behind RNG. The extra bad part is that there are other servants out there who have essentially this exact skill, charisma plus two other buffs, star rate and crit damage, without it being locked behind RNG, although with slightly lower stats. 
for example, we can look at Nagao Kagetora, who has not come out on NA yet for the exact same skill here. But without the RNG, makes it just a better version. So that's really the weakness we're seeing here with Lakshmi Bai. Moving on, let's look at her second skill, Assault on the Sipahi. This gives one ally, bleh, one ally invincibility for one turn, has a 60% chance to give them healing regeneration for three turns for 1,000 to 2,000 health per turn, and has a 60% chance to give them a damage cut buff for three hits that last three turns for 1,000 to 2,000 damage per hit. Again, this would be a pretty good skill if not for most of it being locked behind RNG. If the extra effects don't hit, this is just a single turn invincibility on a long cooldown, a six turn cooldown for one turn of invincibility. If the extra skills do hit, it gives some nice extra defensive buffs, which is nice, but it's single target. You really want those defensive buffs to generally be AoE so that your team stays alive instead of just one unit staying alive. And finally, we have our third skill, which does help make her first two skills better. Resistance of the Gwalior. This gives Lakshmi Bai guts one time. It lasts three turns and will revive her with 2,000 to 3,000 HP. It will reduce her own debuff resistance by 20% for three turns as a demerit, and it will increase the entire party's buff success rate for three turns by 20 to 40%. This is the most important skill in her kit, because it is what allows her first and second skills to get to 100% success rate on all their buffs. So then why is she still bad? Well, one, you have to use this skill first to guarantee her good buffs, meaning you can't save your guts for a good time if you want to make sure that you're strong on the field. Two, the cooldowns on these skills are not synced up. Look at this. Five turn cooldown on the first skill, six turn cooldown on the second skill, seven turn cooldown on the third skill. That means this, these all have extra downtime unless you want to risk not getting those extra buffs. If you want to make sure you have the good buffs, you have to wait extra time because they saw fit to not line up the cooldowns. As you can see by her skills in MP, she's set up to kind of pop all her skills at once, provide the party with decent buffs, and then act as semi-damage, semi-support. But as we keep seeing time and time and time again with Servant, semi-supports that lean towards damage dealing as in ones that have a damage dealing MP, are much worse than full supports or full damage dealers. Part of it is because they don't add enough support into the semi damage dealer or enough damage. She winds up being average at everything and thus outclassed at anything you might want her to do. Her, her skills just don't do enough to make up for the RNG hurdle she's given. She doesn't deal enough damage because half her skills are offense and half her skills are defense focused. And other than that success rate buff, there are better defensive supports, better offensive supports who can do her job better. But if you want Lakshmi Bai, let's take a look at what materials you need to level up her skills. Lakshmi Bai is a little bit expensive. She requires four, uh, bleh, eight war horse horns, four would be really low. 36 proofs of heroes, 60 bullets, and 20 aurora steals per skill. Well, 60 gunpowders, but call them bullets. Meaning to max all of her skills, it would cost you 24 horns, 108 proofs of heroes, 180 bullets, and 60 auroras. Some of these mats have been around for a while, while a couple are newer Lost Belt materials from Lost Belts 1 and 2. So the ability to farm them has been out, but... If you're not a long-term player, the high cost of the bullets and the proofs of heroes is really going to be a stopping power for the newer players. And if you are a long-term player, and you've gotten other servants that required things like those bullets especially, you may not have a lot in reserve. So this is a servant that is hard to level up her skills, mainly due to those facts. So how does she stack up against her competition exactly? As, a, as an AoE force, our Saber, her main competition are Artoria Alter, Artoria Lily, Nero, Siegfried, Gawain, and Suzuka Gozan. Comparing to all of them, Lakshmi Bai's damage output is on the lower end. 
because even with all her buffs up, the only one she's really beating out in damage without a lot of extra help on the outside is Artoria Lily, and any extra help you can give to her, you can give to anyone else. The amount of support she gives is... It's okay, but it's nothing special, so she doesn't really fit into a more supportive niche, so she would be outdone by the more supportive sabers like Prince of Lan Ling. Honestly, Lakshmi Bai is just kind of weak and her competition will in most cases do better than her. She does have potential to loop with a double Scotty setup, which is more than you can say for any of these servants here. But the problem is you need extra setup with her. You need some extra help, and I'll go into that a little bit later when we talk about her craft essences. So yeah, she's just kind of being weighed down by half-assed support skills and doesn't do the damage you wish she would. Thus, the only one she really beats out would be Artoria Lily, and Artoria Lily is closer to a three-star servant. Honorary four-star, I guess. Now, if you do roll for her, what skills should you prioritize in leveling? I would personally start with her first skill. Everything scales very well on that first skill. Getting all of those buffs up is a very high party damage increase. It is a good skill, so that's why you should focus on that first. Next, I would follow up with her third skill to remove as much RNG as possible on her other skills activations, and finally end with her second skill, because her second skill is very defensive focused and only single target, and single target defensive focused skills are very not desired in Fate Go. Now, let's hit into those craft essences to equip her with, shall we? As an AoE Quick Servant who has semi support skills, you. You know, want to try and set her up to deal damage if you want to use her as a looping servant. There are only three different ways to do it. Number one is a max limit broken kaleidoscope. That way she starts with a 100% MP charge. It is the only way to get her to three turn loop on her uh, uh, without extra servants and with just double Scotty. And even then you're still pushing it a little bit and you and I believe you still need help with a Mystic Code to help out as well. So not, not very easy to accomplish. If you want to set her up as a more support style, uh, semi-support, Fragments of 2030 is nice. She is able to produce stars pretty decently due to her AoE quick MP and multiple quick cards and riding passive. And this will help pump up even more stars and allow her nice crit damage uh, um skill to help out whoever she's trying to support and finally if you want a very generic um craft essence that you can use from an event one summer would be the one that i would suggest as it is a 10 percent quick performance up 10 percent mp damage up and 50 percent starting mp gauge now as for servants to group lakshmi by with Oh, hi, it's Waver. Look at him. He is made the list again. 50% MP charge, attack up, critical damage up, defense up. It's a no-brainer to put him on the team with just about anyone. But as a quick servant, Scotty is the best possible support to bring with Lakshmi Bai for trying to deal damage with her, at least. Due to Scotty having a 50% quick up, a 50% MP damage up, and a 100% quick crit damage up and defense down all very good things and finally um any servant with an rng skill such as imperial privilege or Ilya's mysterious medicine skill stuff like that if you want to guarantee the effects on those you can bring lakshmi by with them in order to pop her third skill and make sure that happens now uh i was mentioning if you want to do looping tactics with her there are three ways one way was the kaleidoscope max limit broken Another way would be to have the plug suit outfit and swap in another servant with your Scotties, such as this waiver that has NP charge to help fill the gap. And finally, that third way would be to slot in in a rash with, say, a kaleidoscope or a max limit broken imaginary around in order to, or I'm sorry, imaginary element, not imaginary around in order to clear the first wave with him and then have her try to clear the next two waves. Again, you are still pushing it. It's still not gonna be easy to do. She's not a great servant for it. And because of that, I don't suggest it. But if you really like the servant, do your best. Try and get that loop if you want to. 
so a quick too long didn't watch for everyone, Lakshmi Bai is weak. She's one of the weakest sabers in the game. Having so much of her kit locked behind RNG means that she needs to use her third skill before the others just to bring her up to par with most normal servants. Her strengths aren't able to make up for her weaknesses in general. It all really comes down to too much RNG in her kit and too much split focus where half of her is here to deal damage and the other half is here to, to prevent damage. And those two don't really work together all that well. You want to focus on one or the other as we keep seeing every time they try a servant like this. But if you do need a good reason to roll for her, I've got one for you. She is an incredibly cute, clumsy, dark-skinned Jeanne d'Arc to add to your Jeanne collection. That's right, she also has the, the wonderful passive that I didn't mention before of Lucky Pervert. Well, I guess for her it's Unlucky Pervert, where she will trip over a banana and you will fall face first into her boobs. So let me know your opinions on Lakshmi Bai, and if you enjoyed this video, follow me on Twitch, join my Discord, all that stuff, and I will see you guys on the next Gotcha Guide. Good luck on your rolls, everyone, and thanks for watching.